Hey, 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 this is Scott. So welcome back to my YouTube channel. We'll cover a variety of different analytics and data science topics, everything from open discussions to software demonstrations, uh, including open source and uh, commercial platforms. So what I want to talk about today is um, we're going to dive into uh, uh, quality control and PCA. So PCA, principal components um, analysis, um, as well as uh, NIPALS. So if you're familiar with that, it's nonlinear iterative partial least squares. Um, you can do quite a bit of things through that. And since most of the mathematics for PCA um, is developed within kind of that, that precursor um, statistical modeling, um, where I'm gonna talk about those things together. And I'm gonna do some univariate data quality um, flows in data science workbench, but I just wanted to kind of give you a precursor to the fact that you can do things with the univariate outliers, remove, you know, data, clean data up and everything, and that's fine, that's great, but what most people forget is that when you talk about a multivariate space, you have a different, um, hey, you, you could have data quality er errors um, or issues in a multivariate space that don't even exist in the univariate space. So everything might look good, column to column, uh, variable to variable. We're gonna talk about today. So um, with that, let me just uh, pause the recording and share my screen. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I am going to use one of the examples that comes within the, the platform itself. Um, so what I'm gonna do is go to the file uh, home and I'm gonna open up examples. And the examples I'm gonna use is included with the platform. This is data science uh, workbench. And so the data sets that I'm gonna use is the industrial evacuator data again this is included so if i double click on that i get this um, data collected in the industrial process over uh, a period of time actually a hundred uh, different uh, time periods uh, have eight variables here so i'm going to go into uh, the advanced models under nipals and i'm going to do principal components analysis pca Click OK. And so you can set your convergence criteria or the maximum number of iterations that you're going to run to approximate the, the fitting. Um, you can also uh, pull out the number of components that you want, the PC components. This is uh, degrees of freedom. So eight minus one, it'd be seven is the, is the default setting here, um, up to the number of variables. And then you can set options for missing values here. And then the advanced uh, option here is to rescale the data. Uh, you can see here, I'm using most of the defaults. I'm gonna use the default of standard deviations and click okay. Um, select all my variables and click okay again. And it's gonna calculate that again, based on that convergence. And so what it did is it pulled three different, um, three different, components in that. And so I can see the contribution of, of each component. So this R squared X is essentially the fraction of explained variation. Um, and this is the cumulative. This is the eigenvalues themselves. This is the Q squared statistic, which is the predictive variation. Um, essentially this R squared X and this Q squared are related. The Q squared is essentially um, calculated on the unseen, the holdback data. So if you're familiar with like machine learning, that's kind of what it's doing. It's, it's basically calculating that predictive variation on that, that holdout um, as well. So that's enough, that's, that's kind of enough of that right there. So let's look at a couple of things that we could do within this platform. Again, what I was saying on the intro is this allow me to do several things that allow me to identify chief components, which is a dimension reduction technique, but also allow me to look at case-wise or observation-wise outliers um, as well, which is really quite quite useful and, and very often forgotten um, 
in any sort of analytics or analysis done. Okay, so um, one of the things that I can do is I can, once I have this, I can uh, go to this quick tab and I can get a summary. So basically that plops the statistics down into a report that I can use again, shows me then whether it's significant or not in, in the number of, of iterations. Um, I can also do the summary overview, which gives me those statistics that I just spoke about. So interestingly, this is exactly what you would expect. Um, you know, I'm always going to increase uh, this R squared X, but once I begin to overfit, I'm going to actually decrease the, the Q squared. So that's something that, that you would expect. Um, and so we did pull out three factors here um, in this particular model. I can actually select that. So if I want to remove one of the factors, or I'm sorry, not factors, components here, we're doing principal components, um, I can remove that or I can add those back in. Um, this, this is unknown of significance. I can add another one and then I get a non-significant result. Another thing that I could do that's related to that, let's just throw in a couple more. And then what I can do is I can go to this, um, these plots and I can do a screen plot, um, or maybe it was under the quick panel. Uh, I wanna do a screen plot. Am I just missing it? Oh, here it is um, under the advanced panel. So I could do a screen plot. And sure enough, this is kind of what we would expect. Remember, we pulled three components out. The contribution for the fourth component is not very great. So this didn't, none of these additional really kind of made the cut of that. So that's consistent with, um, with the platform determined as well as what we could do with a, with a visual. All right, um, let's see some of the other things that we can do. Here, I can look at the variable importance. So I can see that filter pressure is my number one, number one variable, um, and then how these other variables uh, fit in. If I want to see that graphically, um, I can do that. Actually, what I should do to uh, make that more meaningful, <laughs> I'm pulling out all the, all the components. So that's probably not what I want to do at this point. I can select, I'm going to delete these two that I just generated. Um, what's probably more important is if I remove a few of these, let's go to two components and then I'll look at um, the, the variable importance there. So with two components, these are the contributions um, of the different variables to a two component uh, solution, right? And then what I could do is I can add another component to the model. And then if I select this variable importance again, it's going to give me the contribution. So what's the bars when I hit the, you see what happened? These variables went up. So these variables increased in contribution. Intake temperature and dew point still are the lowest um, contributors into this three component solution that I have here. All right, um, let me see, what else do we want to cover? Um, so that's the, the variable contribution, kind of the principal components piece of it. So let's move into the next thing, which again is that multivariate outliers. And if you're familiar with multivariate statistical process control, um, you might be familiar with a T-square, but what this does is this basically is looking at the multidimensional space of the process across time. So again, these were different measurements taking, we took 100 different measurements and we took them across time and it looks like here um, at the 16th or the 18th um, point in which we took an observation, we got an outlier. And so that's above this threshold level down here of 12.339. And actually the next step did as well. 
number 19 is out. But then the process came back in and we're all good down here. So maybe there was an intervention, somebody brought this back into control, or maybe this is, was just a one-off problem, but this, this shows you the multivariate outliers for a, for a process itself. Just so that you know, I mean, if you, if you, I mean, to me, this is provides a lot of the information that I would would typically want. But if you wanted to do um, some additional plots, you can do this um, D to model plot, and I can see here again um, that, that 19. Um, uh, it's, it's basically the difference here is there's two things that we can measure, right? We can measure the variance across. And so how the variance changes and how the variance between all these variables is related. And then we can also pick location and whether those things are off by, by location. So those are the major two themes that we're going through here is what is the change in variance and what is the change in, in location. Um, there's lots of, of course, there's a lot of other plots that you can do. This is kind of neat. So if I want to look at component one versus component two, and I want to create um, uh, a plot, let me do it. I'm going to unselect this by plot, and then this this case name, and then I'm going to click on the scatter T, and so then I can look at how these two components are are related, right? And boom, there is our our familiar point number 18 that is showing up out here as an outlier as well. Okay, um, I could also, by the way, since I know that, um, well, let me do one more thing real quick. Let me do a uh, line plot of, uh, um, that's not the one I wanna do. Let me do a line plot th this way. So if you think about it, this is really kind of correlation. So around zero means that there's not a lot, not a lot going on. So in process air temp, this doesn't really contribute a lot. These are the variables that really contribute a lot to, um, to this P1, to this component one. All right. And we can, we can look at different components, right? So this is doing it here. If I selected here, here, it would do, do it for two or three. So this is highly interactive capability that you have have here. And then um, so there's not a lot going on here, but these these variables there there's quite a bit uh, of swing. And then um, let's see. The other thing that I could do is uh, I could do another scatter plot. I could do this one right here. This is essentially component one versus component two and the different loads for these different variables, right? So when they're close to each other, essentially they're contributing uh, very similarly to these two components. So I can see that mass airflow and intake temp are somewhat close, all right? And I could even, if I wanted to, I could just go into very simple, I could go to graphs and do a 2D scatter plot and that's intake temp and mass airflow. So that was intake temp and mass airflow. And so if I looked at that, um, then I can look at the relationship between these variables as well. And so it, it not not necessarily a linear model, but there does seem to be a relationship between those two variables. Um, and then Let's see, is there anything else I want to do? Um, under this advanced, I can pull out, you know, if you're familiar with eigenvalues, I can pull out the eigenvalues. That's pretty much every, eigenvalues are driving all of the different um, statistics um, that we have. If you take the linear models, uh, you know what those are. Um, so I think that most of what I want to cover. Um, the only other thing is if you want to generate the code for this, down here in the code generator, I could generate the PMML as well. So this is the PMML code that would go with that, or if I wanted to do C-sharp, 
I could do that as well and and generate that code and deploy it. So anyway, I hope that was useful. I'm going to do some on univariate uh, outliers, but this gives you an idea of how to deal with multivariate outliers. I hope to see you soon, and uh, we'll see you then.